Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome to our first meeting of uh, November 7th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. in the Sugar House. Why don't you call over, please? Yeah, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Robold. Here. Seven members present. All right. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Lord, please be in this meeting that thy perfect will be done. Bless our, our first responders, our troops, their families, and our citizens. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Action on the special meeting minute for uh, 831.2. Second. <coughs> Any discussion on those minutes, Council? Was Lindsay the second? Yes. Yes. Any discussion when you're ready, Ms. Brenner? All right, Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? I think I'm going to abstain because I don't think I was that meeting. Okay. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Those minutes past 601. Motion for the October 17th regular council meeting. So moved. First, second? Yep. And any discussion on those minutes, council? <coughs> I'm in right. I'm ready. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Those past 7 0. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. Um, attached after the minutes is the planning board recommendation uh, for the DR Horton residential development. Uh, they met on November 1st. Uh, as you'll see with the attached communication, um, they did recommend the approval um, minus the fencing around the ponds, and but they did require that uh, full road to be between the rental side and the sell side. Uh, they also recommended the zoning uh, plan change. So that's just a note here for the record. Once we get to the city manager report, I'll also have another section where we'll go and talk about the timeline. Sure. Thank you. Sure. And to the city manager report. Oh, thank you again, Mr. <laughs> Mayor, <laughs> members of the public, members of council. Um, so under discussion topics, this has been on for the past few meetings, just so everyone knows, we will be introducing the appropriations budget uh, next uh, council meeting on 1121. We'll have action on that on 12-5. It'll be effective on December 20th. Uh, the next planning board meeting is Tuesday, November 15th at 6 p.m. here at the Shelter House. That is hopefully the final Arbor Homes preliminary uh, plat meeting that they'll have with the planning board. So to make the similar recommendation to council, how we have the DR Harton uh, recommendation in this week's packet. Um, once they get that through the planning board, similar to what we're gonna do later on in this report. Uh, Mayor's Court, uh, I did attach a new uh, report I'm gonna be giving the council. So this, this is reiterating what happened in October, and please extend my apologies. But the initial report that was given to me, so you guys remember this. Um, so we looked at like, oh, he is, suspending a lot of funds, which he still is suspending, but not as bad as we thought. So really there should have been two lines here. So when we see this first line it says 165, if he suspended any of that, there would have been a number below that. So it was very misleading on this document. So what we're gonna do instead to give you guys more of a narrative. So this is gonna exactly tell you what the case was, how much the fine was, how much he suspended, and what the timeline of that suspension would be as far as having to come back in. So this is what the reports are going to look like from here on out. They'll also have at the bottom of each report who uh, just chose the pound line and not come in for court. So this is what they're going to look like moving forward. And again, that's just for October, what Rudy did, uh, I think, at the last meeting. But I wanted to at least get it back up to you guys as well. Um, meeting with school officials. Uh, I met with Paula Crew, the finance director in the building, uh, a gentleman, on Thursday, November 3rd. It was a great meeting. 
We talked about the two developments coming in, possibly the third at Twin Creeks. Uh, basically, they wanted to know how many kids that were going to be there. Um, we still don't have that answer yet because I'm trying to determine the formula. Uh, more than like, uh, more, more, more so though, they wanted to know the stages of development. What, what, what can they expect in year 23, 24, 25, 26, and year on? Um, so it was a good meeting. Uh, we have agreed to meet more often uh, when it gets closer to the final plans coming in. So I'll definitely keep <coughs> council abreast to those meetings as well. Elizabeth Township contract. We have Commissioner uh, Biltz in, in the audience today. He is a township trustee. Sorry, not Commissioner Township trustee for Elizabeth Township. Uh, last week he approached our fire chief and then approached me as I shot you guys that email and explained the situation to you last week. Um, they are wanting to start their own department. Great for them. Um, Mr. Adiltz is wanting us to end the contract a little early uh, in July instead of waiting the whole year. Um, my recommendation is, is not to do that. Um, I have no problem with ending the contract as long as it's through the terms that were agreed upon, which is a 12 month from the written notice date. Uh, but on top of that, too, we have already budgeted for these, this contract to be in our, our, our funds. So when we take that out, we have to reevaluate uh, re those funds. So we are looking to lose around $91,605 a year. Um, and those are all inserted, uh, inserted into our EMS funds. Um, the contract year runs April to March, so it's not a traditional January through February. Um, should council allow him to be out of July, that will be ending the contract um, a year and eight months early because it's not a full contract year. Because we're we'll ending, we'll ending all of 2024 plus the addition. So right now, if he were to leave at the tw a year mark, which is recommended and uh, according to the council, I mean, counting to the contract, should we get that uh, written statement that they want to terminate in November? It would be this time next year. Should we get that letter in December? It would be a year from when we get that. Um, the best I can do, Mr. Diltz had come to my office prior to that when we first started the contract. He was concerned with how much we were staffing. And when he came to my office then, I informed him that since it was approved by council, I do not have the power to change the contract. This is the same situation. I do not have the power to change the contract. Um, the best I can do is if council would like to do in the form of a motion, is I can bring that contract back to you with an amended out how you end the contract term and then they can move forward and see fit. Solely that is your guys' uh, decision. Um, but again, I am not recommending that due to the financial uh, fallings that we would have as a result. <coughs> Any questions? Sir. Uh, do we need a motion for that tonight? Or how would you? Well, I'm not going to bring the contract on my own. I mean, amending the well, ordinance I, on my own. I mean, so if you guys want to entertain that, then you would do a motion to, yes, we would entertain ending it early, bring the contract next year. And that was the motion I was thinking of making. Hmm. I understand that. But either way you decide to go, that's how you would have to handle that. <coughs> Um, has a written request been made yet? No. Thank you. Mr. Dilt is here if you'd like to take the podium. If that's okay, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes. I was there. If anybody had anything else, you can speak. You can speak now, and then we'll see if there's any other questions. So. Mm -hmm. Sir? As Mr. Briggs said, my name is Greg Dilt. I'm from Elizabeth Township. I do have a paper in front of me of requesting the Board of Trustees in Elizabeth Township hereby no notify the city of New Carlisle that the Board of Trustees wish to terminate this agreement as of November 6, 2023, and that the compensation from Elizabeth Township to the City of New Carlisle be prepared to the date of termination. This notification shall serve as a 12-month written notice as the termination notice of termination as stated in item four of the agreement. The Board of Trustees Elizabeth Township respectfully requests in lieu of the 12-month notice of termination that the city of New Carlisle also consider a request to terminate the agreement early as of June 30th, 2023. And that compensation for the lives of the township to New Carlisle be prorated to June 30th, 2023. Elizabeth Township wishes the 12 month notification period be waived by the city of New Carlisle as amended in this request. On Mr. Bridges' response for me stopping by earlier this year, asking about, or when I asked about we weren't in we weren't that happy with the contract. The only answer I really got was, you signed the contract. You signed the contract. You should have thought about that before you signed the contract. There was no resolution. There wasn't, hey, we're working on personnel. 
and the economy is this way. So that was very unprofessional at that part. So we don't feel confident in Mr. Bridge of bringing this to you guys. That's why I had to come here today and want to submit this letter to you. We uh, respect Mr. Trustee. He did a wonderful job for us as a fire chief, always answered our questions, always there, and always willing to work. So I would like to submit this letter to you guys for the one-year contract, but we would also like to request uh, July or June 30th. And the reason part of that is, too, is Mr. Bridge at the first meeting, he told us, he's like, I don't understand why you don't have your own fire department. He's like, he recommends us to do it. So we did do a study, and they recommend doing our own fire, our own fire department. So, I mean, we're just taking a recommendation from your city manager that we should start our own fire department. We were like a burden to you guys because they had to fulfill our contract. So wouldn't this lessen your burden? Wouldn't it lessen his burden? You guys will have your fire department personnel all here, and they don't have to fulfill our contract to the end. So again, here's our letter. We respectfully request to end June 30th. However, if not, it's be it noticed that it's the one-year contract termination. Do you have just one, or do you have multiple copies of that? No, I just have one. Okay. I can I can send the rest in a certified mail, or I can just drop them off. But. However, whatever you like. I mean, if you are you giving that copy to us or yes? Just, okay. Go yes. Um, in that first meeting you come, I, I will take offense to you having the confidence in me because we actually went to two of your meetings. I mean, as Chief did, um, we have, were very explanatory in those meetings that we had at your place. <laughs> But what that contract was going to look like, you guys did sign that contract. When you came and you that first meeting, you're talking about my office. We actually had probably a 20, 30 minute conversation about you know all aspects of things. So it wasn't just you signed the contract. But at the end of the my end statement was at the end of the day, you signed the contract. Exactly. But we had a lot of back and forth about why we were there. You also had that back and forth with the fire chief before you even came to my office. So to sit there and say that it, it, you have no confidence in, in me, I, I, I don't take offense to that, but I just want to clarify for the record uh, with council that um, we had a very constructive criticism conversation when you're in my office the first time. I would have to respectfully disagree because sure. all I had was you signed a contract and it's like you're a burden to us and you guys, you said you thought about putting a significant levy on the ballot this year and all that stuff, so thank you. Thanks. Mr. Mom. I'm sorry. Great. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you coming over. My only question is, is there anything that we agreed to that we have not done? <clears throat> per contract, probably not. But when we signed that contract, it was pretty much take it or leave it. I mean, it was basically forced on us. We had we had to sign the contract. We had nothing else. I, we contacted Troy. We contacted Tip City to help us out. Everybody was in a problem. So no, it was take it or leave it. It was like shoved down our throat. So we had to take it. And we were under the we believed that our station would be manned a lot more than it was. I mean, at first, I mean, it's getting better now. But at first, I mean, it was there half the time, partially or not at all, half the time. <clears throat> but but we, we've done what we said we would do. Without looking at the reading word for word of the contract. I mean, besides, yeah, I mean, you man our station. Not down the nitty gritty, I'm just saying, in your opinion, we've done what we said we would do. In my opinion, now, like I said, I had that feeling that our station would be manned a lot more than it was. Thank you. Yep. I was at that meeting when there was two items here. And there are very few Yeah, I wasn't at the meeting, um, and I, I wouldn't say the word burden, uh, you know, because I know that you know, we have staffing issues of our own. So it's, you know, it's just it's basically trying to keep the scale in the middle, in my opinion, from what I 
from what I hear from you and Mr. Bridge and our own fire department, it's that you've got to find that happy medium where you can keep. And I know there's times where we were having short shortages in our own firehouse. It wasn't just, you know, on your end as well. It's, a, it's over on ours, I assume, too, from, from conversations I've had with you. So. That's really Sir. I forgot your name, sir. Uh, Greg, was, do you, to your knowledge, was there any runs not answered that we should have answered? Uh, EMS? And that would be. Um, you I'm, guys were staffed, or okay. The only time any call was not answered was the township was open, was when, uh, if we did not have manpower to man their station after ours was manned, mm -hmm. and our station was on the run. Okay. That's happened probably okay. maybe four or five times. I was going to say but that's just so the nature of calls. So when when your when our station was manned and that station wasn't, we still answered calls up there. Yes, sir. From from here. Yes, sir. Okay. No, I said if we were on a run here, then then it would be mutual aid to Troy or Tip or whoever. But if we were in house in the city, we answered the call from the city. If you were there. Yes. And you said that was probably four or five times max, Chief. Excuse me, sir. You said that was about four or five times. As I can remember, yeah. we've only had been in this contract since March. So since March, there's only been five calls answered by mutual aid for Elizabeth Township. I, I, that's a yes, Major. I'd have to go back and look through all the records. But like I said, anytime there's anytime they have that we have not been in the E Town station mm -hmm. and we were manned at the city, they answered the call, whether it be fire or EMS. And we did. I think we had a special meeting on this contract with council yes. regarding our lack of staffing and how we <coughs> continually did not have our own place staff because we were staffing them for contract and that's why council was adamant about switching it that we protected ourselves first and then that and it did start off kind of low by like five days if i remember correctly because mr dills came to me and i thought it was excessive but looking at the data there was only like five days a month that we could not cover them so we have been very astute to that contract and what our legal uh, responsibilities are. Um, I'm glad they're starting their own department. I think it's best for them. I hope they have done their due diligence. Um, but <clears> the <throat> contract that we have was is a result of the special meeting that we had. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Since March, we fired seven people, mm -hmm. and that helped a lot. In October, <clears throat> if I remember right, twenty. We were in the station 25 days out of the month, which, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think their trustees had a contract they thought was gonna be a lot better than what they were. And it, you know, it started off kind of rough and, and here we are. Um, but if, to me, if they were never the, uh, working out, getting their own department, then the contract terms could be amended to reflect an easy out or early out, depending on what they wanted to do. So they had their opportunity to kind of put their hands on it. But as Mr. Grimm stated at the first meeting he was at, they didn't have a lot of questions in the second one. Um, I don't think they were, they didn't sign up on the second one either, did they, if I remember correctly. So they had plenty of time to kind of make it their own. Do you have staff lined up? Do you have something in your, in your like a, a fail safe thing if something doesn't come your way and you have you just okay. Well, I guess it would be on them at that point, right? That would be on them, right? Because would the contract would be done? But on like we, if they end it and they can't have it, the part of the new agency has to go back to the way. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know if council wants to. I have one more question for you, sir. So are you looking for a resolution tonight from council on this? Okay. But honestly, since you submitted this, you just ended the contract of the year. You, you officially submitted a signed document and said you're ending the contract of the year. 
So that's yes. that's going. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yes. Sure. All right. But yeah, not really so that you're not going to go back on that because once you're, you're competent at November, you're you're done. Yes. Okay. I I would like to also say that. being a retired firefighter, and there's another one on this board, that if something on their part would happen and they couldn't start in a year, that we would be gracious enough to cover them until they did get started, maybe on a month to month, something or the other, but that's down the road. I wouldn't want to you know, in a year, say, okay, you're on your own, and they go, uh, we don't have, we don't have any people, you know. I, I wouldn't want to hang them out to dry like that, and that's just a firefighter's opinion and thinking. So, uh, but, you know, a year from now, we'll see what, what they got going on. And personally, I'm not interested in ending the contract until the end of next, until November 23. Had to think of a year. Any other, any questions? Yeah, why is there dirty? Excuse me, that's one we'll be ready for. Council doesn't want to make any sort of motions tonight, which is completely understandable. We just got the official letter from them, so if we want to have some time to. You're, are you going to copy that and send it out to us? Or? Yeah, I can send it out. That way, you guys can look it over, read it again. Thank you, and moving on to the city manager report. Elected official pay comparison tables. Um, I think at the last meeting or some, relatively, you guys have brought up pay, so hopefully you see that attachment. Um, kind of really good data collection. So we have just an area one on tab one, and we have another page where it's statewide. The statewide is not as broken down as much as the area, but it should give you guys a good starting point to kind of look at the data and be like, this is the direction we want to go or not go. Uh, if you have any questions on that, just let me know. Uh, New Carlisle House stats, um, they are attached. Um, we got a call, trash camp placement. So we do a little research on our code. So we will, I will be sending to planning board uh, them to look at our code um, to actually have an ordinance that says where you have to place the trash can when it's not for collection. Because right now it just says for collection they have to be at the curb no more than 24 hours before or after pickup. But what it doesn't say after that is where they have to be other than your curb. Right. So right now we had a complaint with someone having them in the front yard. Is that justifiable? Probably not. Um, I like them to the side or the back of the house. But that would be something for the planning board to discuss and to go through the same process as they did with the code changes for conditional uses. They'll look at it, make the recommendation to you, and you guys vote on it. Um, so we do get a lot of calls on that, actually. So now that we started tagging people, we we're finding out that, yeah, we don't have anything to stick with actually where they're at for placement other than collecting day. So we'll be moving forward with that. Um, council will have their shot at it, like I said, get an ordinance once it goes to the planning board. Um, flags with profanity, we got a lot of complaints about that. We continually do. We are having Jake to take a look, another look at that. I have a feeling it's going to be freedom of speech. It's no different than someone wearing a shirt walking down the street. Um, but at least we've done our due diligence again um, to, to cover that because it's not the best. Uh, liquor permit, legislative notice, pizza plus, it is attached. Um, basically what this is asking is if they're, as local elected officials, do you want to have a hearing on their liquor permit? Basically, it's a way for you guys to say we had a bar that had continuous violations, that had continuous issues, for you guys to step in and be like, hey, we want a hearing because it's not going very well. Pizza Plus, we've never had a complaint on them. They've been selling now for quite a while. So I'd recommend you guys just move past with that and do nothing on it. Um, so do we need a motion on that one? Yes. So someone make a motion to not do anything, that'd be great. I move not to do any action on the uh, look permit for Pizza Plus, leave it as is. Second. Oh, wow. Second. 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 Second.
Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogel? Yes. Pass the 7 0. <clears throat> okay. All right. Chief, can I say something? You can always say something. <laughs> I'll hold back. Number one, the language in the contract for Elizabeth Township for the year notice has been there since its conception. Right. It was nothing new. Um, and uh, Councilman was in the, in the meetings with us, and, and Mr. Bridge was never any more than a professional and worked with them. We gave, we gave them several options. We gave them a lot higher price at one at the beginning and got down. I was willing to work with them any way that we could. Uh, to say it wasn't professional. Well, I remember, I don't remember what the exact number was, but I know that we were, we, I think, were discussing a much higher number. 600,000. Yeah, yeah, it was like coming, yeah, you come Wait. back with a lower number, so. We went, we went down to 390,000. Yeah. And there's a reason why Tip City and Troy never entertained it. It's not because they don't, they want, don't want the money. They don't want it. Our own, uh, our own department has suffered for many years that and, for that contract. That and every department is in the same boat that we're in, mm -hmm. needing people and can't get them. We were blessed this year to hire seven people, and four out of those seven are paramedics. And like I said, that station's been manned the past two months, almost 90% of the time, with a paramedic. My initial opinion when he said that they felt, you know, what, I forget how he said it, pushed or bullied yeah. into the contract. I mean, and they, you know, I, I think that maybe on their own, because of their own personal issue, they did because no one else wanted to deal with them but us. So, I mean, maybe they felt, well, this is what we have to do regarding this. Time. I mean, they have to understand well, we've I mean, got to look out for ourselves at some point. If, if they were bullied, we would never came up to $600,000. Right. Thank you. And it, 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 it was. What was said and what was portrayed here tonight does not surprise me. In that contract, uh, to, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the language said that that building would be, their station would be staffed after our station was staffed. And if we had the manpower, it got staffed, we didn't, it didn't. And he kind of indicated tonight that like he didn't remember that or he thought it was going to be staffed more he something. felt that it would be staffed more but i had i had already we had already spoken with the meetings prior to the, the contract being signed of what the situation was with the old contract that we were we were over 50 percent of the time sometimes not staffing our own city to staff them first mm -hmm. right. so he yes he knew what was right i mean i mean it's like you said mr bridge you signed it and that's what it really boils down to. And it'd be I mean, different if that was. That's if what that your bill collectors say and everybody else that you signed a contract with. We had like a, life, we had a, we had a very good meeting the first time around. We did. And by the end of the day, I'm responsible for the contract I signed. Mm -hmm. we are, you're, we're, we're all responsible for the fine print. And the reason it's, all, it's on a weird schedule to begin with is because they didn't want to sign two years ago. I mean, last cycle? The first first cycle that I was fire chief, they didn't want to sign because they weren't sure of me because I was the new chief. So that's, that's why you have an April January start. to March. Because I made chief in December. Mm -hmm. It was due in January. They didn't want to sign it because they were, they wanted to get to know me first. And then they didn't sign it to March. Mm -hmm. Second cycle, the next contract that we had, they didn't want to sign it because we raised the price mm -hmm. by $25,000 a year. But they finally signed it. So, but it'd be different if that language was something new in the contract, but that language has been in that contract since its conception. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Back to um, sure. Uh, thank you. And moving on to the manager report. Um, so we had the budget uh, work session and the numbers are kind of weird looking for now. Uh, so I wanted to share the income tax revenue. This is what I use to kind of gauge. Um, especially how we close the year in doubt. So one of the things we want to look at is the combined revenue. Um, and this is through October. So the last report you guys got was through <coughs> September is around 13% off. So we have closed the gap just a little bit. We're up 9.77 um, difference. And this is this time last year. So if you look down at this bottom one, this header could have been a little bit better. It says historical combined data. It should just say for November and December. 
So what this is saying for us to end just as much as we did last year, we're going to bring in at least 175, 793. Our tax administrator and myself are confident we can bring in over that. So I think we'll collect a little bit more than what we did last year, which is going to have a positive impact on our final uh, budget numbers. Uh, but I wanted you guys to see this because, like I said, this is what I kind of look at when we kind of do this stuff. Um, it is concerning that we're 9.77 down because I think by the time we close this year out, I mean, historically, we've been 7, 8, 9, 10 percent for the year above. I don't think we're going to hit that this year. I think we're only going to be probably 2 or 3 percent above collections than we were last year. So what we see is that starting to level out just a little bit, you know. Um, but we really want to look at where this was coming from. Is it employer withholding? Is it individual withholding? And we see employer withholding is down almost nearly 10%. So that means that they're not paying a lot or they're not hiring. It also is encountered to our individuals down 4.3% too. That's your individual tax holdings. So our people who were working last year, they're not making as much as they were last year. So we see where that drop is coming in. We just haven't been able to, you know, see what the year end is gonna look like because we haven't closed yet. But this is some decent data that we have that we use. Um, you guys continue on getting these um, in your monthly reports just in a different kind of layout. Um, but I'll be watching this as November and December close. If we don't close as much as November and December, or already got a backup plan for our appropriation budget, we'll come back to you and say, hey, we need to in this. Uh, so it is on my radar. But at least wanted to share this with you. Um, any questions on the tax revenue chart? Mm -hmm. Sir? Uh, it says here that you estimate <clears throat> November and December being a minimum, minimum of 200000 Is that still what you're looking at for this month and next month by the end of the year? Yes. Yeah, that was our tax collector. She put that number in there, and I okay. agree with her, yes. Okay. Yep, yep. So if, if we do collect that 200000 then where where would that put these other numbers? The uh, <coughs> would it raise it up by uh, so this right here your combined revenue right there million? would go up two hundred thousand okay yep uh, yep that, so one point six right there. there yep that would be that would be impacted okay all right thanks sir welcome Mr. Why so little they changed two years ago they changed how we do that um, um I, I i can get a better explanation for you from vicky and i'll email it to you uh, but the state now collects and then disperses down to us. So we don't hold our own money. They get it first, then they cut us a check what we owe. So what happens is they're usually late giving us to us. So if you see, if you go, how much history you have on your council packets? If you go back to 19, when we see the breakdown of CCA, you'll see that state income tax be a lot higher than see once they change that rule where they collect and mail us what we, they owe us, you'll see it go down significantly. <coughs> they stockpile the money, get interest on it, and give us, give us our cut. Well, depends. Depends. So like I said, it may roll over to next year when they get it. Depends on when they get us to it. So they may send us a check that was collected in December of 2022. We may get that in February of 2023. So I'm saying so these numbers are not going to be 100% accurate because it's depending on when they get us a check. Mm -hmm. Makes the judge on the budget pretty hard. Well, it's such a small percentage. I mean, it's yeah. something that it's, it's, I mean, it is a lot, but uh, compared to our other numbers, it's not a lot, but it is frustrating for sure. Okay. And planning board, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you had that recommendation. So we have to set some timelines for the meeting. So um, I, I, again, attach 1278.10 and 1278.11, because that gives you the breakdown of the timetable, excuse me, but I have it broken down here. Uh, so we'll act as today being your official notification date. So 1278.10 says it has to be less than 60 days from the notice of a planning board, but the legal ad has to appear at least 30 days. So 30 days from the day would be December 7th that the legal ad would come in. Anytime <coughs> after December 7th and before January 6th is when you gotta have that meeting. Um, this particular developer is looking to get this done quickly. He wanted it, all this done by the end of the year through council, but unfortunately we will not be able to make that uh, just due to the time, time constraints in 1278.10. So um, you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and set a date now um, where we can set the date uh, for the hearing, I mean introduction and public hearing tonight, or we can set it at the November 21st meeting, preferably we can just do it tonight, that'd be great. And then, like I said, once you do the public hearing in action, that's pretty much I think the mini meeting minutes that she did tonight, then you have to wait at least 30 days for you guys to take action on that. Okay. 
So you're saying, I mean, sooner or there, though, if we can do it like, so let's, let's, get it let's just say the 12th of December, then we if can. If you can have it. a special meeting the 12th of December, that would be fantastic. I'm, I'm so you would have the hearing. Hold on. <coughs> the wait. hearing could be December 7th. So I can get that legal add in. Then I have to get another legal add in for the actual. And it, that meeting didn't run until a month later. We met August 31st and then we met September 28th. That particular one, though, we pushed out to the furthest limits possible. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if we have December. Can we do that on the, on the a regular council meeting along with the town hall? Well, that's December 5th. Then you won't, yeah. not, you know, you'll have to, you won't. Well, he's talking about the 12th, though. It's a week earlier. Right, but you have to meet the first criteria, which is no more than 60 days, but you have a 30-day notice for the legal ad. So the legal ad, the soonest it appears is December 7th. Oh, yeah. The yeah. next meeting is December 5th. Okay. So if we have the legal okay. ad for the hearing on December 7th, then I can have another legal ad in for, for the 12th, but that has to be at least seven days. So you, you can have a special meeting on December 15th to actually vote on Which they meet December 7th. We'll say play it safe, December 8th. One, two, three, four, so that, that's at least 30 days, but not less than 60. Check. Then within 30 days, you can have the vote on it. Like I'd at least have a legal ad put in a week notice. So the 15th. Yeah, so you can. Then do the 15th. So do you guys want to have the hearing on December 8th and then action on the 15th? Uh, I'd like to give you 7th and 13th. 15th I, will be a good day for me. I'm not available on Wednesdays. The 13th is Tuesday. I'm not available on Tuesdays. It has to. It would have to be the seventh. I got. It would have to be the 15th or after. About and the 16th. 19th, we were thinking about canceling that meeting. So at that point in time, honestly, we canceling the meeting. On the but 19th? that was some talk. But if you're going to have a special meeting on the 15th or 16th, <coughs> then Miles just go ahead and have the December 19th meeting and take action on it. Yeah. And not have a special meeting. Yeah. So do one on the eighth. And then actually action on the nineteenth. And action that way on the nineteenth. Yeah, that makes sense. There's no other extra meeting. Mm -hmm. So the hearing would be the eighth? Is that what yeah. Public, yeah, public uh, public introduction and public hearing would be <coughs> December eighth. And then vote that'd give you December 9th. That'd give you seven days to get the ad because if you get the ad in by Monday. And I can put the ad in as early as I want. I can say have it run on this date. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So have fun have them run it on the 12th, and then we'll have action on it on the 19th on the schedule. So we're going to do the 12th now to the. No, uh, no. Have them run the ad run. Have like the, the ad. Yeah, I can have. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. I got you. I understand. And then, yep, gotcha. then we can have you know have action on it on the 19th on the regular it's scheduled regular. council. Okay. So public hearing. Intro. Is it Twelve eight. You said the eighth, correct? <clears throat> yes, sir. And at six thirty. You want six or six? Six thirty. Six, six, oh, six whatever, if we can do it. Whatever six council is fine with me. Six, I'm yeah. good with either. Six. Six. Six p.m. on the eighth. Okay, and that's for the introduction of public hearing. We'll <clears throat> take action at the twelve nineteen. Yeah. So I guess we don't need to have a motion on the twelve nineteen, but we can do. We should do a motion for the first meeting. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah. If you want to have a special 12, meeting 8, on twelve, 12 eight. eight. I move we have a special meeting, council meeting on the eighth, for a public hearing. Is it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> At six p.m. At six p.m. Thank you. <laughs> Did you say second? Second. I should be. Just she got it. <laughs> You're sleeping down. I'll be on your toes with her. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you. <laughs> We're losing down here. <laughs> <laughs> keep saying All right, email. are we good? <laughs> we'll go after. We're good. Okay to call? Yeah, yeah call, please. Councilman no. Lindsay. I thought I oh um, yes. Yes. No. Councilman Roadwell. Wrong. Yes. yes. There. Mayor Lowry. Yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That passes seven zero. I may not be at the nineteenth meeting. Hey, we got Howie. We don't need you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to be? I'm going to Christmas New York. Shopping? I'm going. I don't like to tell my business on. 
to. <laughs> you going Christmas shopping? I'll be Christmas shopping. No market. Randy's house will be vacant. So if we're looking for a place for a what? No, it's not. What are you talking about, man? I got people. Uh, someone lives there twenty four seven. What are you talking about? And, and, and I know a guy can take care of them. This house gets ransacked. You're gonna feel really good. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I'll, as soon as you set foot on my property, we get notifications. Yeah, they got. <laughs> all right, let's cross that sidewalk. So what else we need? We need one for the. Nope, this is regular it's house regular. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I got two more things. You don't mind? I didn't put on. Yep. Here. So, sad news, we got two deputies leaving. We have Deputy Mc, uh, McDuffie, he got a promotion, so he's gonna be uh, going, uh, I think, to a special unit within the Sheriff's Office. I forgot the name of the special unit. And then Deputy Harris is going to go for County Road Patrol. So, um, Wednesday morning, this Wednesday morning, I'll be at the Sheriff's Office at nine o'clock, going through interviews to replace those two deputies. Um, another thing I'm doing, uh, just in the very early stages of looking into things, I have not got Jake involved yet, um, but me and Mr. Cook were talking about having some kind of safeguard in place where something falls through like on Halloween uh, where we didn't have contracted deputies because they called off. I think I'm going to work something out in the contract. If not, there's something else we can use. But I am going to have a third option too. Maybe we can get a group of what he calls auxiliary police officers um, and just look at the legality of, of having someone be able to step up if we need, you know, rural patrol or something. I, I don't know the feasibility of that, to be very honest so with you. Just patrol? Um, well, you know, um, you know, was thinking one. more of a more <laughs> actual uniform cops. But mm. since we are contract out and it is the sheriff's territory, I don't know what we can do, but at least we can look into something. Right. Yeah. I don't think we had any issues. Uh, no, we did. Night? But he, I mean, and like I said, there's, there's, from what I learned now, we could, we could talk to them about blocking out certain days that people couldn't take off or whatever. But no, at the end of the day, we had a state trooper come in. We had fire chief SMS. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think several one of comments about uh, Megan Forrest fire. on too. So um, I just like to have as much Feel good. on the road as we possibly can during those days. It is a great uh, effort for visibility. Um, and you expect to see that on Halloween. Mm -hmm. with you. So, but no, we got zero complaints. Everything did well. But just to make sure that, you know, we don't have to, I'm not scrambling the night before to try to get people in. That's all I have for you to see manager report. Be happy to uh, entertain any questions. Um, I had something that wasn't mentioned, and this is kind of for Howie, but it's also for budget reasons. And <coughs> tonight's meeting, uh, tonight's meeting starting off was so dark, and I was like, man, I thought I was going to miss the meeting. It's so dark out, but lights. Yeah, he brought that up. We brought, I got that for him already. Did you bring it up? I was like, man, he brought up the planning board meeting. Okay, so it is so about. dark out there. With, with winter weather coming, it would be nice to have some light out there so you know if you're stepping on ice or snow. Or, <laughs> Just in general, easier for the cops to know. For sure, 100. That should have been done. We'll, we'll go on it. One or two, I don't know what you guys discussed. One or two, maybe one closer to here, one a little bit farther down the path. I think there's one pole right up here or something like that. There are ones, and I think there was one put on down here recently, but I couldn't. Okay. Yeah, but I know this one right here for sure needs something. That one got taken out with one stone. That one got one out? Okay, so that one got one taken out with one stone. Awesome. Treat. Well, I would hate yeah. to see one of us old folks all out there. Me and yourself. And have to be uh, it's transported dark. by Chief Trustee's mm -hmm. glorious ambulance. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up so good. Thank you. No, we, we, we should have that already. We'll, 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 we'll take care. Yep. No awesome. Problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Anybody else for Mr. Bridge? All right. Ms. Banner. Hand over to you. Wait, no. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm jumping, jumping here. Uh, some reports. Committee reports and comments from members of the public. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. All right, moving to resolution, Ms. Burner. All right, we have resolution 2022-16R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. <coughs> a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the testing alignment and programming of public safety radios. Second. We got a first by Eagleson. <coughs> okay, uh, explanation of this ordinance, we will defer to our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Uh, what this ordinance is basically for is our March radios, our handhelds, and our mobile units. They're kind of like a, they're basically a computer, uh, and every so often they need to be tuned uh, about every two years or touched. 
uh, and this for you. The radios that we received from the county, we had over $96,000 worth of radios free from the county uh, approximately almost three years ago. Um, and this MOU allows them to come in, tune the radios for us at the price of $50 per radio, which is very cheap because the if initially they wanted the, all the departments to go together and buy the tuner with the county, and it was going to be approximately $17,000 per department to buy the piece of equipment. Uh, and instead, we opted on the act of $50 per radio to get each radio tuned. Um, and also, too, it covers them retouching the radios for programming and that type of thing. Okay. Any questions for Chief or Mr. Birch? Once again, how many radios do we have? 25. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Uh, Mr. Berner, back to you. All right. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passed to 7 0. All right, ordinances. Ordinance 2022 51 introduced on 1017. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Ordinance 2021 36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor court. So moved. Second. Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> a curveball. <laughs> what? What's your name again, sir? <laughs> <laughs> he, must, he must be new. I haven't heard from him before. Oh, that's funny. Uh, an explanation of this ordinance. Um, so the bond schedule is a living, living, breathing document, as we have discovered. Um, talking to the magistrate and the clerk, um, they found it would be a lot easier to manage the books um, and then put us in line with other mayor's court if we have one uh, court cost um, for all the fines instead of having buried. So that's why we have that. We didn't attach the whole bond schedule again because it's a redundancy. Um, some are 89, some are 110. They just want one uniform court cost. Yeah. <coughs> Any discussion? Any discussion here? I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's fair. All right, Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. I'll pass the 7 0. Ordinance 2022 52, introduced on 1017, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. So moved. Second. <clears throat> was, was that Grim? Grim. <laughs> that right. Grim. That's another new member. New member. <laughs> and give me one second. An explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this is a yearly housekeeping ordinance. Uh, we uh, have liability insurance with um, public entities pools of Ohio. It's brokered through USI. Uh, we've been in a great relationship with USI for kind of a long time now. Um, this year we did see an increase. It's the first increase we have seen in since um, probably 2017. I think it went up that year before that. Historically, we have got really great rates. Um, this year it does go up a little bit. Um, we have a 10.3 rate increase due to market conditions. Uh, a small increase due to our increased expert expenditures and also a small increase due to cyber liability. Any questions? Sir. I just want to uh, commend our city manager on his negotiating skills with this company. He, uh, this is only the second highest premium we've paid since 2017. And he's cut it and cut it and cut it, and eventually I knew it was going to catch up to us. But, but I thank you for your negotiating skills and for the money that you've saved us on this problem. Thank you. That's all I want. So, thank you, Mr. Okay. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? 
Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. That's accepted 7 0. <clears throat> the next are read only. Second. <laughs> First. Relax for a minute. Ordinance 2022-53, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1121. An ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio to lease a portion of the city's waterworks property to the New Carlisle Baseball Softball Association Incorporated and Ohio Nonprofit Corporation. Ordinance 2022-54, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1121. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salts. Ordinance 2022-55, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 1121. An ordinance amending sections of the new Carlisle zoning code for the purpose of adding community gardens as a conditional use in certain zoning districts of the city. Ordinance 2022-56, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 1121. An ordinance amending sections of the New Carlisle Zoning Code for the purpose of adding shooting ranges and archery ranges as conditional uses in certain zoning districts of the city. <clears throat> ordinance 2022-57, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 1121. An ordinance amending section 1278.04 of the codified ordinances for the purpose of establishing minimum side yard setback requirements for future residential planned <coughs> unit developments. Would you like me to read? No, I'll read it. You take okay. Break. You take it. Other break. business. City officers can close <laughs> Friday, November 11th to observe Veterans Day. Uh, 2022 Town Hall will be Monday, December 5th. 2022 at 6 p.m. Uh, additional city uh, open for additional city discussion uh, on the town hall. Um, that's going to be tied into a uh, council meeting. Correct? <coughs> We're going to. How are we doing that? We're doing. I had to review the minutes as far as right. So town hall is 6 p.m. and then we get through that and then we go to the regular meeting. Okay. So, and then we'll have some. Didn't need to say mm -hmm. we had like refreshments. Yeah, yeah. So it's just more basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, donut. We have to have donut. Uh, it was like water, coffee, and chips. Oh, boy, I'm deaf. He's going to be disappointed. <laughs> Dude, cops aren't the only one who like donuts. I'm disappointed. Feel free. Whatever, whatever you need to do. We're all well, you can turn. He does have to drive out of here. Tonight. He does. But the broken taillight. <laughs> broken taillight. <laughs> and, and busted it. Wouldn't broken. I came in. <laughs> is, that, is that what council wanted, right? Just like refreshments and snacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you're going to get an, are you going to put it out on the, on the mm -hmm. city page and stuff. If you end up having some sort of flyer, maybe shoot it out so we can all share it, maybe. Uh, I'll probably just put some on Facebook and okay. share that or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, seven. Yep. All right. Anything else, Council? Right. Only other thing I just wanted to bring up. <clears throat> I know we're all busy with these developments and extra meetings and stuff, but I think we need to still keep in mind the uh, charter and the charter mm -hmm. review that yeah. the people that spent mm -hmm. a lot of time on that make sure we don't uh, miss the opportunity to get that on. Mm -hmm. that yes. year, so. That's a good point. You want to, you have another meeting you have to do with that. So I literally just got done today going back and forth between what's changed and what council wanted to change on that last meeting. Uh, you still got, I think, half of the charter to get through. Yeah. Do you want to tackle that? You want to tackle that the night of the public hearing and introduction for because I don't think the other one's going to have nearly as much <laughs> attendance for the, the uh, meeting on the eighth. Yes, I'm sorry. So I'd like to do like a duel, like to introduce that public hearing that and then go finish up the charter. Sure. Okay. Try it. Good call. Okay. Um, I'll give you about the glass. Yeah, yeah it's going to be crazy. everything yeah, that yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll call you, I'll call you. So December 8th is now public hearing and charter. charter review. You want to redo it? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, any other discussion? Council? All right. Second. 
been slipping down there. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? No. I mean, yes. Councilman <laughs> Cook? I feel like, yeah. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? No. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you dispel this word and you said no. <laughs> Are we here adjourned? See you. Well, we're going home. Thank you.